Hey friends, this is Waylon um, in a ridiculous outfit in Boulder, Colorado, and I hope you're all well. And I didn't turn my Instagram on, so let's do that. While uh, you all come here, I will turn that on. All right, it's on. So, yeah, good. Can you just? Um, so, sorry about my mindlessness there, but we're all mindless. Let's do a follow. Okay. Um, so we're all mindless, and then our job when we're mindless, like I just was, is to just come back and not guilt trip ourselves too much, um, but also like admit to ourselves that we're mindless. Um, so today I wanted to do a video about how to deal with aggression on social media because there's so much of it out there. Uh, who here has had an aggressive encounter on social media? If you have, say where in the world you're from, say smiley face emoticon or a funny emoji, um, raise your hand, comment, whatever you want. I am here to answer questions and discuss. And um, if you want, I can argue with you, but I won't do so aggressively. So I have a lot of experience with how to deal with aggression on social media. Um, hey, Vancouver, because I, uh, you know, for years ran Elephant's uh, Twitter feed. We have hundreds of thousands of followers on five different accounts, 10 million fans on Facebook. And sometimes, like recently, I posted a criticism of maybe we can put the link in of the empath article. I criticized them, so called self diagnosed empaths, for flipping empathy on its head. Empathy is a, a thing of compassion. And saying that I'm an empath is often saying I feel too much, so I want to keep trouble, troublesome people away. So, yeah, and there's trolls, there's anti Semitism, there's racism, there's sexism. There's just aggression rampant. There's otherism, you know, everyone who, thank you, Wild Onyx. I love the Elephant Journal from him or her. Thank you. So there's so much aggression out there, whether we're a Trump supporter or we're um, not, or we're African American, or we're, uh, we believe in equality, or we don't. Um, there's so much. And social media, you know, they used to call it back in the 40s, I think during World War II, an armchair general. There's so much aggression. So what do we do with it? Well, Trung Paramshay, the Buddhist teacher, used to say that most of that aggression, most of that neurosis is um, you can just stomp on it. Not stomp on it in an aggressive way, ironically. You're not stomping on other people. You're almost stomping on your own aggression. It's just sound and fury. It's just like a bag of hot air. It's a paper bag of hot air, and you can, and you can just smush it and pop it. So, you know, you don't smush a bag of hot air uh, aggressively, right? It's kind of fun. It's like popping a balloon. So take that attitude toward it. So the main thing to do is I often will DM people if they're being aggressive on me on Facebook. Um, the main thing to do is to avoid the soapbox effect. And the soapbox effect is instead of arguing with Vanessa, um, one on one, where we might listen, we might discuss, we might argue, it might be really hard at points, we might come to a common understanding, we're looking at each other's eyes, we're not um, objectifying each other as evil. Um, instead of all that, we feel like we're performing because people are liking my comments or people are liking her comments. If they like her comment, I get mad. Why did only three people like my comment and four people liked hers? Who liked her comments? How dare they? How dare they support her calling me sexist? And then you get into this big uh, drama brouhaha, um, which sounds like a 40s uh, uh, club for dramatic actors. Um, so yeah, there's, there's uh, some crazy folks out there, but honestly, we are crazy folks sometimes. So a lot of it is taking responsibility and refusing to be dragged down to their level. But again, you have to watch your language. It's not their level, it's the level they've allowed themselves to be dragged down to. They are fundamentally good, just as I am. And there are trolls, there are racists, there are haters who are solid in that. And those people, I block them. I don't get into it. But if, if someone is disagreeing with me, even in a hateful way, I will try at least once to talk with them and to listen with them, just once. I'm not gonna put up with it again and again and again. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, even if I block them, I'm going to remember, especially like there's a, a friend here in, in Boulder who is sort of like that about me. 
And I really, you know, I knew her for a long time. She's a good person. I know she cares about stuff. She's super active. Uh, I really appreciate a lot of that. And I basically feel like we could get on the same page, more or less. Maybe not 100%. Everyone's different. But, um, you know, if we ever had a heart-to-heart. But instead, you know, there's this sort of somewhat violent objectifying of who I am, which isn't based on who I am. And so I don't honestly take that hit. It's not attacking me. So she's attacking her own preconception of me. Um, So, yeah, 99%. What I really want to emphasize is we can do the work of creating peace on social media and in real life. We can do the work. That is doing the work. 1% of the time, you got to say, you know, I do believe in calling out the haters. Session, but only if it's, is recalcitrant the right word? Only if it's solid, only if it's stubborn, only if they're fixed in being right and not listening. Up until then, I will really try to kind of massage out the tension because right now in Trump America, there's a lot of tension in gun Uh, gun crazy America, there's a lot of tension. In climate change world, there's a lot of tension. In lack of equal rights, or equal rights slowly improving or quickly improving, but still awful in a lot of ways, there's a lot of tension. In the 1% and the 99%, there's a lot of tension. So it's, uh, it's a nutty world. It's a nutty world, and social media only makes it nuttier. So it's our role. It's actually kind of important work to dial down the aggression on social media. So again, just to restate, take responsibility, drive all blames into one. That's a Buddhist slogan. You're not flagellating yourself with guilt, but you're taking some responsibility. That responsibility can include DMing them, direct messaging them, IMing them instead of playing the soapbox. I do a little trick where I'll start a DM to say Vanessa if she hates me and I hate her. I'll I'll write the DM just to her. And it always changes my expression. I'm way less aggressive. I'm way more gentle and kind of listening, asking questions. It's really powerful to start with asking questions. Um, And then I'll cut and paste that DM out of the DM box and actually put it in the comments. So it's still in the conversation, but I framed it just directly to her without trying to perform for people who are liking or commenting on our like on our comments. And then number two, I do think it is important and it's okay to call out the aggressor. Like Trump is creating a lot of division and hatred in America. He foments it, a lot of fake news. Um, I don't believe that's a partisan statement. I think it's pretty factually accurate. And I think that is okay to call out, but it's vital to criticize. It's vital to call people out without aggression. Let the facts speak for themselves. Invective doesn't actually add anything to uh, the strength of your case. So, you know, if you meditate, if you do yoga, if you're trying to be a good person generally, if you go to church, whatever, the work happens in real life. And part of real life, like it or not, is happening in an unreal life kind of context, which is social media, and it's affecting real life. So we need to bring our peacemaking, which is hard work. It's a lot harder to breathe and to slow down and to listen and to ask questions. It's harder only in that we have to remember. It's not actually harder than being stressed out and aggressive all the time. Um, So thank you so much to everybody. Thank you, Barbara, for your kind comment. Um, Yeah, and letting go is good advice, but like, how do you let go? Again, that comes back to meditation. That comes back to exercise. That comes back to eating real food, not standing up. That comes back to talking with friends, community, listen, sharing, opening up. We can bottle up everything, but it won't work. All right. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Ebesos. Allah, did